Hey everybody, welcome back. On today's show, I have a special friend of mine who's an LA dancer, among other things, of course, William Harris III. So stay tuned. Ready? A five, six, seven, eight. you guys welcome back to shy dance productions channels where we help dancers elevate their dance career as you guys know i'm shy lopes and i've been dancing for 20 plus years in the industry in la and nashville i'm a professional dancer choreographer youtuber and producer so today on today's show like i told you we have my friend william harris the third you guys the latest gig that he just did get into this he was in the super bowl performing with the weekend that's crazy. <laughs> like, I know, he's still like, I can't believe I just did that. Isn't that amazing? Among other things, he's been on the Oscars. He's been on Glee TV show. He did the CMAs. We've done Harley Davidson gig together. And we also did Real Country. I got to choreograph it, and he was a dancer. Because yep. you know you hire your friends, OK? Absolutely. You definitely do. So that was fun. But along with being a professional dancer, he is also an amazing singer. He's a stylist, a wardrobe stylist. And he just started his own clothing line. Get into it. He's got some bleach work styled by William. Okay, and wow. I'm wearing a cute little piece here too today. Boom. So, along with many years in LA uh, being a professional dancer, he's also lived here in Nashville. And that's why he's here on my show, because we friends. <laughs> but when he was in LA, he trained with Debbie Allen at her academy. So, like, he's legit, you guys, like, amazing, well rounded. So, I'll put all of his links below. <laughs> As I fall off the chair, <laughs> I'll put all of his links below and you guys can check him out on like Instagram, his website, down below, okay? So let's get into it, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> we got five questions. We're gonna talk about these five different topics today just to help you guys like learn more about the dance industry through somebody else besides just me. So, first question one. <laughs> How did your career start? Like, where did it start? Like, with who did it start? <sighs> yeah, that's a fun question. <laughs> I'll be over here. <laughs> so, um, I moved to LA in 2007, and shortly after, maybe four to six months, um, I had a job at a coffee shop, and it was just a horrible job. <laughs> And so I needed a job, and so I asked Miss Allen if there was anything at the studio that I could be Debbie doing. Debbie Allen. Yes, Miss Allen. And so, um, yeah, I asked her if there was anything I could do, so I started working in the office there. Okay. And eventually I started um, assisting her, and I became the artist in residence at the studio. And so that kind of projected me into my professional career. I started getting some experience in doing production work with her and doing behind the scenes and casting. Yeah. Um, wow. And my first job with her was... What was like the timeline of that? Were you kind of like... So I moved to LA in January of 2007, right. very important. Um, and see, I worked that job for maybe two to three months. Okay. And then I started working in the office around April, and then around July, I became artist in residence. So it was a very okay. quick path. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Um, she, to give a little more background story, she actually kind of handpicked me. I auditioned, I went to LA, and I auditioned by myself, which is very unheard of. She usually does these big group auditions. Right. And it was a one-on-one. -on -one Audition Ooh. with Debbie Allen. And oh my gosh, I, are you so nervous? <sighs> I was like visibly shaking. Y'all, she's the audition. like a legend. I, if you don't know who that is, or if you don't know who that is, you need to. We'll put it down below. Yeah. You need to. You well, need yeah, to we'll, know. we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like her biggest fan. Oh my goodness. Um, and she handpicked me and invited me to move to LA. And when I actually went audition, she told me there was no scholarship money available. And it was, it was hard. Heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking, but I was determined and I knew some people back home that was like, okay, they work with grants. So yeah. maybe I can ask them, maybe there's a grant that I could receive to help me move out there. Yeah. I really want to do this. Because it's expensive, guys. It, it's quite expensive, especially when you're young, moving to LA, it's a lot mm -hmm. to take on lot. and navigate. And so I got a call, I think the week before Thanksgiving that year, and I actually missed the call. Oh. I was with my brother in his room. My phone, my cell phone was in my bag. You're like, and I tried to call desperately, trying to get in touch with him. And a voicemail was like, "This is Josh, Joshua Aguilar, Debbie Allen's assistant, and she wants to talk to you." So that's the voicemail that I got. So I was mortified right. and so embarrassed that I missed this call. Like, I, I cried. I cried. 
went to my So mama. she basically, when you talked to her, was like, we want to offer you. And so yeah, then I actually called back the week after Thanksgiving. And he was like, oh, everything is fine. We just want to let you know that whenever you're ready to move to LA, you're on full scholarship with room and board. Okay. <laughs> so that's a good start to have, guys. <laughs> but you had to be there. I had to be and there. And you auditioned, so. By that, myself, that I went to LA by myself. That says a lot, so just think about all of that, okay? That was, that was a good first question, okay. <laughs> Moving on to number two. So the hardest part about LA. Like what were your biggest surprises or just things you had to overcome that were like challenges? Definitely can talk about this for a while, but my biggest challenge first of all was living in a different city. Mm. I lived in Nashville my whole life mm. until I was 18. It's I'm quite different. Born and raised, LA is its own planet. Yeah. <laughs> on the planet Earth. It so is just a, being such a different like culture. Culture shock, Yeah. 101. Just seeing a lot of things I'd never seen before. Just experiencing people that have lived, you know, not in the South, like yeah. I just grew up in the South. So totally there was insane. a little bit more, I don't wanna say the word freedom, it's just a little bit more liberal yeah. than anything that I was used to. So definitely. definitely was a culture shock and having to learn how to live with roommates, that was a fun one because one of my first roommates. That was not a fun one for me. We had to kick him out. <laughs> Like, That's hard when you get when you're young. Yeah. There's just so much that goes wrong because you're trying to figure out who you are and like living with other young people that are trying to figure out who they are, and and then people sometimes are not responsible. Mm -hmm. And you that, learn like old, people that are older than you aren't also more. The maturity level doesn't add up. Yeah. Age and maturity level do not equal. Yeah. And it's sometimes, sometimes. still learning in my thirties. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you it never doesn't know. Al mm, doesn't always add up. Two yeah. plus two doesn't equal four. Living, so living arrangements, yes. Culture, so, living arrangements. Living arrangements. I, I mean, grateful for that first year and a half that I didn't have to pay rent, so I wasn't oh, having to yeah. learn how to do that stuff. Right. That was a tackle of how to pay bills and how right. to do and be responsible. And I will have to admit, I was not perfect. Clearly, yeah. nobody really is. No, so people, uh, they just, they're able mm -hmm. to just handle stuff and it's fine. Like, yeah. I was not perfect. I. I can say that. Budgeting, budgeting, like budgeting, real life budgeting. Le yes. I had to learn the hard way too on that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a hard one, budgeting. So try to train yourself a little bit if you can, like look at some budgets and talk to some people that know things about planning. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, let's move on to number three. So uh, what can dancers do now to prepare? Because mm. we're in a real interesting time right now. It's COVID and a lot of dancers have had to either put their professional career on hold or the ones that are trying to pursue it now, even a bunch that we know that are here trying to move to LA, they're like, what can I do, Shy? Like, what should I be doing? So what is like your advice for that? I think right now we live in an age of information. So mm -hmm. we're in a place where you can't say that you don't know. So yeah. doing a lot of research and knowing who you wanna be working for. Yes. What is their style like? Does their style match with you? Like, do you need to go and train in their style? Yeah. Do you need to go train with other teachers that do some, something similar to that mm -hmm. so that you can be prepared for that? I think those are things that I wish I could have learned. Yeah. Or I wish someone would have told me a little bit sooner. I, fortunately for me, I did have mentors and people that eventually did tell me those things. But yeah. when I was just kind of on my own, those were things that I wish I would have known going to my first auditions because I, I had no clue really. Like, right. They were like, okay, you should research. And like, I heard all these conversations, but you know, YouTube was still very new back yeah, then. Like, was. YouTube was nothing like Now y'all have no now. excuse. You have social you have media, no Instagram, excuse. YouTube, I mean, Google, you can find Everything. And back then, and back then was like 13 years ago. Let's just clarify yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's different. It's different, <laughs> less information. And yeah. so that was, yeah. That's one thing I feel like a lot of dancers could do right now is just a lot of research and being prepared. Yeah. I think. When I moved to LA, it was definitely on a whim. I knew I wanted to move there, but I didn't have goals per se. I just knew that I really wanted to train. That was my biggest yeah. focus. So I think outside of that, I just really have a lot of goals. It was just like, okay, I want to train. Like, yes. I want to be better. Right. So I started at 14, so I was late. So I was like, I really want, like. He started dancing at 14. When he says I started at 14, not I started, started professionally. I started dancing at 14. So a lot of you who I talk to on YouTube comments and like answer questions and stuff, you guys are like, am I too old? No. Look at all the gigs I just told you that he did. Like you, you're you never too old, so don't think that you can be too old. So and one of my dance old. teachers started at 19. See. Terry Beeman, he's 
Oh, a legend, guys. Legend. Look up Terry Beeman too. That's a good he one. He started so. at 19. But if you work really hard and you're committed yes. to it, you will training, grow. Training, 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 training. If you really training. want it. Yeah, good one. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So things you wish you had known before you went to LA. I know we covered this just a minute say, ago, but like mm -hmm. just things you wish somebody had told you or warned you about or, or even said like, this is awesome, you're gonna love this, just things you wish you knew. Okay, one thing I wish I would have known, yeah, it was just having some goals yeah. when I moved there and knowing myself a little bit more. I think I was really, I mean, 18 is so young. It's so young, I was it's 18. It's so young, and I mean, there were a lot of people at the time, you know, moving when they're 18, it's very typical, but yeah. I, I will say I noticed a little bit of a difference in maturity level mm -hmm. um, between some of those other dancers. Um, and that just, that, that that's such a broad thing. So yeah. there's so many elements in, um, not elements, um, what's what I'm looking for? Exponents that mm. go into that equation. Like, yeah. There's a lot of part moving parts to that. So it's not just like, okay, you have to do it this way. There's so many different ways, but I just wish I would have had a little bit more yeah. focus or mm -hmm. just intention. Right. That's intention, the word intention. Putting some intention into that list of goals, really thinking about what you want and planning it out, looking at it. Is this what really what I want? Uh, mm -hmm. do, I, do I want to work for this person? Do I want to work for on TV shows? Do exactly. I want to try and go on a tour with a certain artist? Yeah. That's important. That's it's definitely that's important. important. And that will set you up for success because yeah. you can actually break down your goals and make it realistic. You can take baby steps. I think that was the hardest yes. thing for me is learning how to get to my goals. Yeah. And how to break it down because I'm a person that's very hard on myself. So like, I'm like, I see big picture. Right. And until I see the big picture matching, <laughs> I'm the not steps. happy. Yeah, but, you're like, how do I climb up there? How do I there's, get to there's touring? Exactly, it's a rung, it's a ladder. Yeah. And there are rungs that you can use to help get you there. Sometimes you can skip a rung mm -hmm. and you just get there a little sooner. Yeah. So it just depends. I should cross my face. I'm like, <laughs> a lot of it is who you know too. So <laughs> that when part. he says you can skip a little piece of this, you know, a step, basically skip a step. It's, it, it is a lot who you know, like if you're out there making connections and meeting people, that's important too. So let's move on to our fifth question. Well, it's not really a question. Um, he just said he really is passionate about production. So I want him to kind of explain it and explore that topic yes. and tell us why it's important to you and why you think it's important for dancers to know that. Absolutely. So that was one of the first things that I remember telling Miss Allen that I wanted to do when I moved to LA. I was like, I want to be on the other side of the table. Interesting. Okay. I there's just something about that work. I was like, I want to know yeah. what it takes to make a show. Right. I want to know. I really like. I was just genuinely, excuse me, genuinely, genuinely trying to say both at the same time. Both. <laughs> genuinely interested in learning what it takes to make a show, yeah. and so. I think every artist, no matter if you're a singer, dancer, actor, anything, working in production at some point is so valuable it because is. it gives you so much more respect for the people that are behind the scenes that highlight you and make you look good. Yeah. How much work it really takes. Yes. And so I have been an assistant choreographer, I've been a choreographer, so like all those steps are very yeah. important, very um I'm very proud of those moments because I actually when I look at my resume, a lot of my stuff, a lot of my credits, excuse me, were assistant credits. Yeah. And I just, I love that work. There's just something so magical behind putting a show together, yeah. putting a, a, even if it's just a dance scene, one right. moment, putting it together and the work and just the camaraderie and the energy in the yeah. room, especially when you've got great dancers, great production people, everybody just genuinely loves what they do and they're yeah. there to just make this project amazing. Right. They're it's so just talented. such a powerful moment. It's just it's so much fun. It's a lot of hard work. Yes. But it is. It really shows you what it takes. Like you're one part of the clock. Like you're one cog. Yep. And all the cogs have to work together to make the clock work. Yeah. And when it does, it's beautiful, it's magical. And when it's not, you just kind of have to learn how yeah. to take one piece out, get another piece, put it in, like figure it out. And the and creative team is usually the team that does that. So, you know, everybody that's in production, like creative directors, directors, sometimes producers, um, and the choreographers, like the assistants do a lot of the work too. So problem solving, and they're the ones coming up with all the ideas, the creative directors are the ones creating literally everything you see in the show. So that is awesome to like know that side of things because a lot of times 
I feel like when I was young, I would just show up on gigs and I wouldn't really know what went into everything. I would mm -hmm. just be like, oh, they're just choreographing. Okay, great, they're the choreographer. But they really have a huge part to play in coming up with the characters, the personalities. And exactly, bringing it everything. all to life. Yeah. Like, especially for screen work. I love doing that stuff because there's so much, I don't know, there's a little extra that goes into it. It's different yeah. than theater. It's so different. It's yeah. completely different. There's just, there's this extra layer. Yeah. So when you're choreographing compared to theater versus for camera, you have to think about how things are gonna read on camera. Things right. reading on stage is one thing. Cause it's so live, different. it's important yep. and it, it reads different. You can feel the emotion, but television and screen film, mm -hmm. like it's a different, it's a different beast. Yep. And you have to tackle it differently. Yeah. And there's so many things that can go wrong in a moment. And I think that's one thing that I, do love about my production is um, experiences that I can see fires like 10 steps ahead. Yeah, you I, like I'm, problem solving I'm too. I'm a I problem bet. solver. Yeah. I love it. And I don't know why I do, but like I love being able to do that and assisting different people. I've learned how to be an assistant to different people because yes. everyone works differently. Yeah. Some choreographers need extra help. Yeah. Sometimes they need you to get, you know, to make the step. Right. And then they'll come and fix it. Yeah. Or they'll be like, okay, it can go more like this, or I'm looking for something like this. Yeah. Sometimes choreographers don't need you to be that hands-on. They're like, okay, this is the step, just learn it. Get it or in. they need you to be like the more technical side, like yep. I need you to film it or I need you to do the blocking and like write mm -hmm. out, I need you to do the graphs. I need like, you to know the counts yeah. to all, like every bit. I've had choreographers that are like, I need you to know this section where it starts. I need you to know the time codes yep. and everything. So if I need you to go back in the music, you're not searching, you're not rewinding, yeah. you can just go to the time code and Ooh, hit it. There's, it's a hard gig, it's being, a, an being an assistant is not for everybody. It is not for everybody, <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart Ooh, no. because it is, you have to just, you have to know how to work with people. You do. And in the moment's notice, yeah, everything can change and it, ha it has to be quick. Mm -hmm. Because there's people, that person is depending on you because someone else is depending on them. Right, so if you have like really good killer instincts mm -hmm. and you're like super versatile and you like problem solving, mm -hmm and you're very well-rounded and talented, this would be something that's good for you guys. If you Absolutely. guys are like, wow, I kind of like, I'm like that. This would be a great one for it you. It would be, and so it just opens the world up because you can see every every step, every little thing that it takes. And then when you see it on screen, you're like, wow. You're blown away because you know all of the work that it takes yeah. just to present this like one minute Tiny moment. little, yeah. Or the, the Super Bowl, for instance, okay. like 13 minutes, like, but it's over like that. Right. But it's, you know, it lives forever. Massive production, yeah. And it lives forever. Right. So. Yeah. Well, this has been super helpful for me. I learn new things every time I talk to him. Even though he's my <laughs> friend, I'm like, really? I don't know. But this was so helpful. Thank you. So I hope this is helping you guys. And as always, please subscribe. And if you like this video, let us know. Uh, shoot us some comments and questions and we'll answer them down below if you guys have any more things you want to hear about that related to this video or anything else. You know I'm always down to help you guys. So also follow William, follow us, and you guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.